Let me ask you a slightly difficult question. Is this new BMW SUV standing behind me the new X3 or an X5? Take your time, take a good look. It's difficult, isn't it? And that's exactly what BMW want. They want this new X3 to be larger, more comfortable on the inside, better equipped, and deliver an almost X5-like experience. What BMW also claim is that it's much nicer to drive. So, because it's a BMW, I'm gonna get right into the driver's seat and drive off first. So, first impressions from behind the wheel. This new X3 is much more refined and silent. The engine is spinning at around 2000 RPM, but I can barely hear this diesel. The cabin is much better insulated, there's less road noise, it's quieter on the inside, and much nicer overall. The new X3 also features something called acoustic glass for the windscreen and windows. So the hush inside the cabin is palpable and quite comforting. Now BMW's 2.0-litre diesel, the 190 horsepower diesel, is a bit sluggish initially. So when you put your foot down, when you tap the throttle, it does take its time to go. But match the throttle, and of course, all the power comes flooding in. And then it's quick and fast and loves to rev, which is just what you want from your diesel. It does get a bit noisy when it's revved hard, and that spike in power you get in the mid-range, well, that isn't everyone's cup of tea. Still, what stays with you is that this engine propels the SUV with plenty of energy. And when you drive it flat out, it feels pretty quick. Ride quality, however, is unimpeachable. The new X3 doesn't get air suspension, but it does get adaptive dampers. And when I put it in comfort right now, ride quality is pretty excellent. I'm really going over some rough stuff, but there are no hard knocks. There's not a lot of loud noise, and it just feels supple, soft, and very comfortable. Nice, big SUV feel. What's led to the improvement on the X3 is that BMW have been able to reduce some unsprung mass. They've done this by using plenty of aluminium in the suspension and components like hollow anti-roll bars. In typical BMW style, it's even nice to drive around corners. BMW has also dialed in a lot more driver appeal. This car is much neater in corners, it's more secure, the steering has a lot more feel, and even in tighter corners, the body control is pretty good. It just settles down nicely and then you can accelerate out and really have a blast. There is a bit more body roll in corners than you expect and initially that does take some getting used to. But the improved steering offers more accuracy, the brakes are better and agility in general is seriously up. But what's it like on the inside? Is it more spacious, more comfortable, better built? So extremely high levels of quality on the inside. The build quality here is almost as good as the 5 or even the 7 series from where these buttons and this fit and finish come. Uh, black artificial leather on the dash with this lovely double stitching, wood grain, metal, all blended beautifully. Real leather seats here, a difference from cars like the Mercedes that get Artico or artificial cow as they like to call it. A lot of BMW stuff you can recognize is this iDrive. It's now a touch screen, so much easier to operate. You get these nice buttons, an old BMW thing. You slide your fingers across it and you can go to the radio station you want. Really cool. And again, the instrument panel, that's a screen. You switch modes, go to sport. It goes to another more aggressive looking thing. We know all these features from the 5 Series and this car is now right up there. The new X3's cabin also feels a bit wider on the inside. There's more space in the back and the luxury cushion has clearly been stepped up. Even the wider front seats feel better and it's nicer in the back too. So in the back, there's a lot more place here. This is my driving position and as you can see, a lot of knee room, I can stretch my legs even further. This seat allows you to be reclined, you can pull it forward, you can take it back. There's a lever here I'm pulling. 
good thigh support, decent. It could have been a bit more, but the backrest is nice and visibility out is extremely good. What BMW has also given you is a vent in the back with a bit of a temperature adjustment. You can go up on the temperature, down. All in all, a pretty decent place to be. So there's no doubt this new X3 is a big step up on the earlier car and when BMW launched it in April you can expect much more SUV for your money. Now question is, is it the best car in its class? Now this is a bit of a tricky question. There's the GLC, there's the extremely capable new Audi Q5, there's the brilliant Volvo XC60. This is a tough class to win. When will we know? When we put these cars together and do one of our famous comparisons. Till then, stick around. कभी न रुकने वाले जुनून को रफ्तार देता है सर्वो वर्ल्ड क्लास लुब्रिकेंट्स